It's officially April, so I'm going to dissect a pair of Yeezy 350s because I want to know if these are actually a pretty decent pair of shoes or if it was all hype. And I'm slowly learning, you just can't trust sneakerhead hype in any way. And you especially cannot trust these big sneaker brands to tell you the truth about what's inside of their sneakers. There are two main things I want to see inside of this shoe and really test. The first is the Ultra Boost Foam Midsole. Ultra Boost, if you don't know, is basically the comfortable styrofoam for shoes, where they take tons of these little teeny foam pellets and fuse them together and people say it's the most comfortable shoe foam in the entire world and adidas says created to bring together the formerly contradictory benefits of soft and responsive cushioning so we're going to see if it's just gimmicky styrofoam for shoes or if there actually is some unique technology and useful benefits to this foam the second thing i want to test is this prime knit upper that adidas says is designed to ensure perfect harmony within the product so let's see if that's just fancy jargon for an ultra thick sock attached to a shoe and we're going to put these materials to the test by burning them drowning them ripping them but first of all we're going to cut it in half did you know that testosterone levels have been dropping substantially over the generations our father's generations they had testosterone levels that are 25 percent higher than ours today which is completely unfair but if you're like me and you're having a harder time concentrate as you get older Older, you don't have quite as much energy and you catch yourself pouring yourself a few extra cups of coffee per day your testosterone levels might be to blame and the thing is it's not even necessarily our fault there's many factors such as environmental changes that are affecting our generation today 30 million men in the u.s alone have low testosterone that's affecting their daily lives the good news is hone health is here to help and there's a ton of misconceptions about testosterone because it is more than just a sex hormone optimizing your testosterone can lead to increased energy increased muscle mass more focus and probably the most important thing for me is better overall mood and hone helps men get tested and treatment for low testosterone from the comfort of your own home and the entire process is super easy all you have to do is collect your sample mail it back to the lab once your results are ready you'll have a video chat with a real doctor who will recommend a personalized treatment plan based off of your biomarkers and symptoms and treatment options include fda approved medications and everything gets delivered straight to your door and i'm far from a medical expert but hone health is and they'll be there with you every step of the way so order hones easy to use at home assessment test today to learn your testosterone levels and for a limited time viewers of the channel can get the at home test and the doctor consultation for only $45 so click the link in my description or go to honehealth.com slash roseanville and thanks again to home health for sponsoring this video chopped in half and that was really fun to cut but also really painful because they're so pricey but let's see what's inside there is so much more foam in here than i thought like i knew there was a good chunk of foam but i didn't know that there is just over half an inch of foam at the ball of your foot and just over an inch of boost foam at the at the heel which is a lot more than I expected. And obviously it does compress quite a bit, but that's a lot of foam. And I'm also really surprised at how thin this sidewall is that encapsulates that boost foam. It's, if we cut this open and put our little caliper in there, it's less than a millimeter thick. And it's a super soft rubber. If we do a quick durometer test or how hard this rubber is, 
on the outsole, it's around 60. So it's not the softest rubber we've seen, but it is definitely on the softer side. Then if we do the same durometer test on the midsole, it's really soft. We'll start with the closed celled portion that's exposed on the outsole. That comes in at right around 20 to 25. And then if we test the cross section where we've cut open those little teeny pellets, that is ridiculously soft. It's at five, four and a half, seven. If we compare that to other foams that you see in other shoes, especially boots like this Blundstone, the hardness of that internal foam is 32. So way softer than any boot we've ever cut apart and especially a lot of the shoes we've cut apart. And just out of curiosity and to see how flammable Ultra Boost foam is, let's do a little flame test and see what happens to this foam when we try to light it on fire. So it looks like it just starts to melt. It doesn't actually start on fire or burn in any way. It is super sticky though. And then if we go to the open cells, put the flame on that. So same type of effect. It's just melting. It doesn't really start on fire, but the internal foam of those little pellets definitely burns a lot more than the outside shell. And I think the shell around these individual pellets that's fused together is really what gives this boost foam its structure and its rebound. Because if this was just a solid piece of foam all the way through, kind of like these blunt stones, you're just compressing a lot of foam. Whereas with these, you almost have a honeycomb effect on the inside, like Nike said was in the Air Max 2021s. This is kind of what I expected to see inside of there. I think those outer shells, because they're a little bit harder, I think they, they compress just as much, but they might have a little bit more rebound so that when you compress this, it springs back a lot more. It's kind of similar to how they put rebar inside of concrete to reinforce it. And it also probably helps prevent splitting and cracking, but I am curious how much this will absorb water, especially once you've worn through through some of this outer shell layer on the bottom. And, it, and more importantly, what happens if you do what some people would say they do is they remove the insole and wear these without the insole? What happens if your sweat starts to get in there? Is this just gonna be a big sponge of sweat? So let's do a quick water test and find out. So the closed cells on the bottom that are exposed before it's really worn don't really absorb that much water, but these open cells absorb a fair amount of water. It is definitely, it stays wet once it's it's absorbed inside of there. I think it would absorb more if those little air bubbles were bigger, but because they're so tight and so small, it doesn't allow a lot, or to, a lot, a lot of water to seep inside. If I was wearing these without the insole in, I would be concerned about how much of my sweat was gonna be absorbed into the midsole, causing these to really stink. But what about this prime knit upper? It literally just looks like a thick sock. And my concern is that if you had a little teeny cut in it that it might just spread and completely ruin your shoes. So let's do a couple tests to see how durable this prime knit upper is. That actually came apart a lot easier than I expected, especially to the cut. Those fibers just kind of dissolve away from that cut area. In the spots where there's no backing, that knit is still a millimeter and a half thick. And I thought maybe it was double knit, but as you can see, as you pull this apart, it just kind of comes unravels. Once you've cut through a few of those little fibers, they're all dependent on each other for tension and to keep this whole thing together. And then what about the flame resistance of this prime knit upper? Does it just go up in flames if you stand next to an open flame? Let's find out. So it seems like it's fairly self extinguishing and because it is a basically a plastic based fabric, it, it does curl up and, and almost heal itself by melting into itself. So it is it's still flammable, but it's not, once it starts on fire, it's not gonna light your whole body on fire. I'm on fire! Not a fight. And while we're in the burning mood, this little lace reinforcement that's two piece, people always refer to it as suede because it looks like suede leather, but it's, I don't think it is. So let's do a little burn test. And as I'm burning this, I'm more not looking at what happens, which I partially am, but I'm more smelling to see if it smells like plastic burning or if it smells like burning hair or flesh. If it's burning hair or flesh, it's leather. If it's plastic smelling and it curls up like the upper did, then it's plastic and that's plastic. So not real suede. And I don't think Adidas has ever said it's suede leather. I think it's just one of those things where people said it's suede and then people interpreted people saying it's suede as leather and then people just start repeating the same things over and over and over. And all of a sudden everyone's calling it suede leather and it's not. And then if you look closer into the toe of the vamp, you can see that this toe stiffener that has a leather print on it that's embossed into it, but I'm, 99% sure it's not leather, but let's put a little flame to it. See what it does. It's starting to curl up a little bit. As for the smell, it smells like plastic, so it's not leather. And it's it's better that it's, it's not leather because leather's a really good 
material for certain things, but something like this where it needs to be really thin and it needs to be pulled and stretched and glued to a fabric, a knit upper, this is a better than leather anyway. And one thing that really, uh, through doing this, sh this, this video, really stood out to me is like, there was something about this shoe that looked really familiar other than the fact that everyone wore them for five years straight. But this shoe reminds me of a primitive man's shoe. Like what they found on like the Bogman and like that Iceman they found just laying in the snow. It's like a primitive shoe made for the modern man. And I kind of love it. So overall, this is a very simple shoe and it's a very comfortable shoe. And this Ultra Boost foam really surprised me. I did not think it was gonna be quite as interesting as it was. I, thought, I just thought it was cheap foam that had looked like styrofoam on the bottom, but the internal structure is really interesting. And I was also surprised at how not durable this, this prime knit upper is. It's still a really cool fabric and it flexes and stretches in really interesting ways and it looks cool. But as for a, the, just strictly a durability standpoint, pretty terrible. And for the price of these shoes, are they worth it? Just looking at taking Yeezy aside and Kanye and every all the hype aside, are these worth the money? Not even close. They're, they're pretty overpriced for being honest, but they are wildly comfortable. And you, anytime you're looking at these shoes, it's, it's, it's not just the materials that you're looking at. You're, you, you really have to look at the whole picture with the hype in it and the influences and who's associated with it because it does matter to people. So let me know what you guys think. And if you've had any issues with this midsole absorbing water or sweat, the same thing with the upper and the next April video will be next Saturday. And thanks for watching. See ya.